In my truck, when my gas needle gets to a certain point, there's this loud beep and the notification that says low fuel. I have a bit of a reputation of running out of gas. See, I'm always pushing the limits of my vehicle. And I, and I have this phrase that I say to, to my wife. I say, we can make it. Rachel hates it when I say that because she's been with me when we were stranded where we barely made it on the side of I-10 in Houston. When I told her, I'm pretty sure I told her at that point, hey, we can make it to the gas station. There was this one moment when I was running errands for a big event and I took the church van to pick up all the things that I needed. I had this moment when I looked down and I saw the low fuel light. It was on, but I couldn't remember when it came on or how long it actually has been on. But then I looked at the needle of the gauge and it was extremely low. And I knew I was in trouble. I needed gas quickly. I went from this belief that I can make it to a little bit of a panic knowing that I was in some deep, deep trouble. I knew that I ne all I needed to do is get to the gas station as soon as I could find one. But there was not one in sight. I finally found a gas station. It was perfect. I could pull right into the gas th station stall and get the gas that I needed. As I got closer to the gas station, I finally used all the gas that was in the gas tank. And now I was starting to coast, trying not to apply the brake because I didn't want to get stranded on the side of the road. But I was trying to coast right into the stall of the gas station. Guess what I did? I coasted what felt like forever. I took a, a right off the road and I coasted right into the stall in just enough time. I would love to say, hey, I told you I can make it, but I got lucky and I dodged a huge bullet this time. But there would be other times where I'd run out of gas and not even come close to the gas station. And if you think about it, driving on empty, it's just stupid. And if you run out of gas, everyone knows you weren't paying attention. And it's embarrassing. It's an embarrassing mistake. It's a basic principle of driving. Put gas in the tank where the car won't run. If running on empty won't work with your car, why do you think it will work with your life? Some of you are currently living your life on empty. You're tired, you're exhausted, and you've got nothing left in the tank. You are in one of those situations, you're, you're just one situation away from shutting down. Sometimes it seems like there's nothing that you can do about it. You're a caring for an aging parent who's sick. You're a single mom balancing school, work, and kids who are now at home all day. Your business is short of employees. You have to work extra to make ends meet. It seems like you get one bad report after another from your doctors. 2020 has thrown everything it can at you. And regardless of the reason, you're running on empty. You got nothing left to give. How do you know if you're running on empty and you're on the verge of a breakdown? Here are some of those signs, warning signs. Here's a physical warning sign that you're always tired. You can't sleep at night. I can't get enough sleep. I have constant headaches. My blood pressure is unexplainably high. Psychologically, maybe you, you fight any change. Maybe you're not as flexible as you used to be. Maybe it's that you're cynical and negative. I'm emotionally exhausted. I feel out of control emotionally. I'm irritable and impatient. I struggle to make even the smallest decisions. I'm worried or I'm anxious. Our behavioral uh, is I've lost enthusiasm for my job, my marriage, my kids, my ministry. I'm using alcohol, drugs, or prescription drugs in order to cope. I struggle to focus or concentrate. I'm withdrawing from relationships with others. Spiritually, maybe you're questioning your faith and your values. Maybe you're, you're not interested in church or ministry. Maybe you're spending less time in prayer and Bible reading. I spend less time in church than I used to. Maybe you're, you're impatient with the spiritual progress of others. Maybe you blame others and make excuses for the lack of your spiritual growth. Some of you completely, completely identify with this. 
You're at the end, emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally, and financially. Empty and headed for a crash. Running on empty is, is dangerous, but what do you do? How do you refill? How do you avoid the inevitable crash? Here's what the, word, the world tells you is the answer is the way to deal with burnout is just to drop out. But there, that's a short-term fix. That won't work very long because life resumes. Your schedule picks back up. You come back from vacation. You can't drop out forever. So what's the long-term solution? How do you deal with this? See, we look to the Bible because the Bible is our guidebook for living. In the book of Isaiah, we find a promise from God that speaks directly to the moments when we are running on empty and having nothing left to give. Isaiah is found in the Old Testament and was written by the prophet Isaiah to the Jews. Isaiah was considered the greatest of all prophets. The story of Isaiah takes place about 700 years before Jesus was born. And during the time of Isaiah's ministry, there were significant challenges for God's people. There were wars, destruction, rebellion. Eventually, after years of invasion and conflict, the region was conquered by Babylon. Being a Jew in Babylon was incredibly difficult. They were forced to live outside of Judah as exiles, away from home, living in captivity. The people of God were living on empty. A lot of you can identify. You spent quite a bit of time at home, living in captivity as a result of the shutdown. You know what it's like to be exiled from family, friends, community. But your situation was short-term, and one you had some control over, not the Israelites. The people of God were beginning to doubt God's power. Where is God? I thought he was all-powerful. How could he let this happen? There have been a lot of people asking those same questions the last few months. Isaiah said this in Isaiah 40, 26, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. See, when I was a kid, or even now, see, I'm fascinated by the nighttime sky. I love to sit outside staring into the star-filled sky, amazed by the vast array of stars in every direction. Excited to see what phase the moon is in or was in. I was, I, I was really, really lucky if I saw a shooting star. Back in the Bible times, they didn't know everything we know about space today. But they were still amazed. The stars, planets, galaxies, it's unbelievable. And the more we discover, the longer space gets. Why did Isaiah direct the people of God to look up? He says, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. See, I, Isaiah didn't just love space. This was a reminder to the people of God and to you when you are running on empty. Every time you doubt God's power, look up. I'm not talking metaphorically, but literally go outside and look up. As a follower of Jesus, space isn't just a fascination. It's a validation that God is larger than life. That he is bigger than anything that you could ever imagine. He created the stars in the sky. He created the planets and the galaxies. If he knows every star by name and where they belong in space, then he will never forget your name. He knows your name, your purpose, and your place. Hey, I know it's hard. I know your entire world has been turned around. Everything seems to be falling apart. But look up. Look up. God has not forgotten you. Look up. God has not abandoned you. The last few months have been scary, but look up. God is still powerful. Look up. The Lord is still faithful. Look up because God is not finished with you. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade. 
Isaiah 40, 27. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. In other words, Lord, why have you forgotten me? Don't you hear me? There has been a lot of people asking that same question the last few months. They're discouraged and desperate. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. In ancient times, gods and goddesses were viewed as, as having human weaknesses. They were believed to get tired, hungry, and ignore the events happening on earth. You may feel like sometimes you wear God out. Like he is tired of saving you, helping you, healing you. Isaiah says that's not possible. He will not grow tired or weary in his understanding. No one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. He, spent, he put the stars in the sky. That's his strength and it never runs out. God never gets tired. There's never a moment where God says, man, I need a break. The definition of weary is exhausted in strength, endurance, vigor, or freshness. Having one's patience, tolerance, or a pleasure exhausted. Currently, there's a lot happening in our world that makes you weary. You might be worried, but God doesn't get weary. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. The pressure of everything that we are facing makes you tired. Everyone is experiencing that. You struggle to sleep because of the pressure. The pressure is like a weight and it keeps pushing and pushing at you every single day. According to a recent report from the Ex Express Scripts, the use of anti-insomnia, anti-anxiety, and antidepressant medications have spiked by 21% between February and March. I've heard it more in the last three months than I, than I can ever remember. People are saying, I'm just tired. Sometimes they say, I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of wearing a mask. I'm tired of worrying about being sick. But oftentimes they're saying, I don't understand. I'm so tired. If you're, con if you're currently tired or weary, this promise is for you. If you aren't Currently, one day you will be, because we all face that. We will all go through that. What do people usually do when they're tired or weary? Well, you get mad at people, you lose focus, or you lash out. You try to do something to change it. A lot of relational problems and dysfunctional behaviors happen because you are worn out. I'm tired of trying to be free from alcohol, so I'm just going to drink. I'm tired of trying to figure out my finances, so I'm going to go shopping. I'm tired of trying to be sexually pure. You get tired when it doesn't seem like there's a payoff. You get tired when you don't see the results. You get tired when you feel alone. And when you're tired and weary, here's the promise. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. The King James Version says it this way. He says that... They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I don't wait very well. No one likes waiting. Right now, we are all doing a lot of waiting. Fast food isn't fast anymore. You have to wait in the drive-thru forever. What used to be two-day shipping has now turned into two-week shipping. Some of you are still waiting on the job. Others are still waiting on your graduation that was canceled. Some of you can't wait for school to start because it's been 118 days straight with your kids. On the other side of that, some of you are ready for school because it's been 118 days straight with your parents. See, we're horrible at waiting. So what does it look like to wait on the Lord? What do you do when you wait on the Lord? You've heard that song that says, you've heard Christians say it. But what does waiting on the Lord actually look like? When you're waiting on the Lord, don't do something on your own. Look back at that verse. Those who hope in the Lord. If your hope is in the Lord, you don't go and try to solve it on your own. Waiting on the Lord is saying, I don't know. I don't have the answers, but my hope is in the Lord. So I will wait on him. When you do that, you see your strength will be renewed. 
Why? Because the God who put the stars into space and knows their name has given you the promise that we find in verse 29. He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Your strength is renewed is because you are hoping and waiting on the Lord. That's the promise. If you will wait on the Lord instead of trying to do it yourself, he will renew your strength. But those who hope and the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. You know, I had this whole message written about eagles and all this cool stuff talking about eagles and birds and how they grow and how they learn to fly. You were going to be amazed at everything I was going to tell you. But instead, I want to tell you again, just look up. But this time, look up when it's light outside. Look at an eagle and watch it how it flies watch how it soars it's not uh, frantic it's not flapping its wings are are controlled it's soaring high above the earth high above trouble eagles glide on on the upcurrents those who hope in the lord will renew their strength and soar on wings like eagles when you put up your hope in the lord you will glide on the upcurrents of God's grace, high above the troubles of the world. The winds of God's mercy and grace will carry you through life's journey. When you put your hope in the Lord, you won't just fly, but you will soar. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Does that physically mean that you can Go run 10 miles and not get tired? Well, no. That's not what that means. If you try that without training, I promise you, you'll be weary and sore for several weeks. But this is what we're talking about. It's life's race. Burnout comes when you're trying to accomplish God's plan in your power. It will never happen. You can never do it on your own. Burnout comes when you rely on yourself or someone else. When you're waiting on society people or banks for the answers when you wait on the lord when your hope is in the lord you can go further longer and faster than everyone else the very thing you don't want to do wait is when god gives you the ability to keep going he renews your physical strength your emotional strength and your spiritual strength he renews your energy look up take your eyes off everything around you and look up to God and wait on him but how how do you wait on the Lord well there there's a lot of different ways but here's what I do I open up my Bible I turn on some worship music I turn off my phone and remove all the distractions open it to Psalms 27 it doesn't have to be that exact one just pick a psalm read it as you read pray each verse back to the Lord you don't have a time limit. You don't have to make it through the whole chapter. Pray each verse back to the Lord and just be in his presence. If it takes you a week to get through that chapter because you're praying those verses and you sense the Lord speaking to you, awesome. It, it, this isn't about checking off a box. This is about waiting on the Lord. You're not a loser if you only make it through a few verses. In fact, when you wait on the Lord, that may be all you make it through. Lord, show me this means. Show me what this means for me. Show me how I can implement this in my life. If you have thoughts or feelings the Lord is speaking, while you are doing that, just write them down. That's what waiting on the Lord looks like. If you're tired today, if you're weary, if you're worn out, if you feel like you just can't go on, I have a promise for you today. But those who hope in the Lord, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's what you're going to do. You're going to keep fighting. You're not going to give up. Not because you have new strength or power. Not because I inspire you. No, you will be renewed and you'll push forward because you are going to wait on him. In Luke chapter 21, Jesus talked about bad things that will happen in this world. The signs of the end times, just, it's just a lot of bad stuff. But in verse 28, Jesus said this, 
when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift your heads up. Then look up and lift your heads up because your redemption is drawing near. When things in your life are falling apart, look up. When the country is divided and tensions are high, look up. When you get a bad report from your doctor, look up. When you're running on empty, look up. When the world is engulfed in chaos, look up. In your darkest night, look up. In your brightest day, look up. Look up and remember that God is at work. He put the stars in the sky. He gives the eagles their ability to soar. Instead of looking at all the trouble around you, look up to the God who lifts you high above it all. Look up and know that He is God. Look up and know that He is good. Come on, the saint of God, lift your heads up. You've been hanging your head long enough. Look up. You are going to come through this season. Look up because God still has a purpose for you. Look up and celebrate His strength and power. Every time you face trouble in your life, look up because your redemption is drawing near. Look up because the God who created the stars and the galaxies made you a promise. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. If you're weary and need hope this morning, I want to encourage you to do this, just to stand up right where you're at, right there in your living room or your bedroom. And I want you just to, I'm going to pray for you. And as I pray, I want you just to lift your hands up, just in a position to receive this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for everyone that is watching online. Lord, I pray for this promise that you've given to us. Lord, I pray for everyone who is weary, everyone who is, who is looking at all of the troubles around them. I pray for everyone who's looking at all the troubles in this world. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you help them to wait on you. Lord, help them to spend time in your presence. Help them to spend time in your word. Help them to spend time in worship. And I pray, Lord, right now, right where they're at, as they are standing up, God, that you just give them the peace. You help them. You give them the strength, God, right now, right where they're at. And, Lord, when they, when they leave this service, when they go to the things that they're going to do today, I pray, Lord, that you give them a sense of peace like never before. I pray when they lay their head down tonight, that you will give them the rest that they have been that they have been looking for. Lord, when they wake up, Lord, that they feel refreshed and they've been in your spirit. Lord, I, I pray for everyone who is at their wits end and is thinking about giving up. Lord, help them not to give up. Help them not to give up. Help them to continue to look up because you have a purpose for us. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In your name I pray, amen. I'm moving forward, no more restraints. I now walk in freedom, and this is the exchange.
for freedom, we are saved. Freedom is contagious, come and join us in his praise. Bless the name of Jesus, it's for freedom, we are saved. Freedom is contagious, come and join us in his praise. Bless the name of Jesus, it's for freedom, we are saved. Our chains are on the floor. 